Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. AMD's RDNA 3 architecture launches later this year, and there have been a couple of very interesting updates. The first of which is AMD themselves have confirmed some major improvements in ray tracing as well as workgroup processor functionality for the GPU, and we'll get to that in just a second. But also, a very interesting discovery has been made, which seems to indicate that RDNA 3 does have some tensor core like functionality. And we're going to get right into that after this message from the video's sponsor. And given that there's a lot of new computer hardware coming out later this year, this is perhaps going to be very interesting to you. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So let's first of all just begin with perhaps what I consider to be the more interesting of the two pieces of news, and that is the tensor core like functionality. Because the advanced ray tracing and other stuff which has been officially confirmed now by AMD is kind of par for the course. I mean, yes, it's great that it's officially been confirmed, but I think most of us would expect this to be the case. But 0x22h has made a very interesting discovery. At least I think they were the first person who spotted this. If not, I'm sorry, I'm miscrediting. But um, basically speaking, if you read over the summary, GFX11, which of course is RDNA3, introduces new WMMA, Wave Matrix Multiply Accumulate instructions. Now, I'm going to leave a link to the tweet thread because it's quite interesting. Um, and I'm not going to go super in-depth in doing comparisons between it and NVIDIA's tensor cores because, for one, we're basing this off of, well, incomplete information with RDNA 3. And secondly, we don't know what NVIDIA are doing with the tensor cores of RTX 40 because I believe that there is some major upgrades there, uh, most likely utilizing some form of technology from NVIDIA's Hopper architecture. But what we can infer here is a couple of very interesting things. The first is that this obviously puts AMD in more of a parity to NVIDIA, although obviously they're accomplishing it in a very different manner. And the second is that this could be used on something like AMD's FSR 2 or 3. Now, if you've been following the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've said a couple of times that I had heard through the grapevine, and this was actually from the same source who told me FSR2 was real quite a while ago, that FSR2 did have some improvements on RDNA 3's architecture. Now, this could be totally not the case, and I am speculating here based upon what I'd been told, but I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think it's, you know, FSR 2, the version that's currently available to the public. It may be a future version. Hell, it could be FSR, you know, 3.9 or something like that. But I wouldn't be surprised if this is the case. And I think it could improve visual quality or performance or a mixture of both. But there are some other things that this could mean as well. Uh, and one of those actually tells up to the next point we're going to be discussing, which is ray tracing. Now, basically speaking, when it comes to ray tracing, it's still, let's say, quite expensive to basically ray trace a scene, especially if you're doing like path tracing. Like path tracing is a reason, for example, that even Quake 2 RTX running on something like an RTX 3080 or a 3090, you're not going to be running that thing without, you know, some type of upsampling, <laughs> like, you know, 4K 120 hertz. It's just not going to happen. Um, because obviously path tracing, you're literally building the entire scene with basically, well, ray tracing. Um, but even ray tracing, you know, in a traditional sense, like hybrid ray tracing, is still really expensive. And, of course, one of the things that uh, happens is they use advanced denoising algorithms. Now, my suspicion, and I have not heard this from a source, I'm just basing this on what has been said here and also the direction that AMD um, have kind of hinted 
uh, with some of its other stuff. Also, the direction NVIDIA are going. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing a video on that one in the next couple of days, hopefully. And also even Sony and other companies basically making ray tracing a lot more efficient. And one of the ways you can do that is basically more accurately predicting using previous uh, frames of animation and bringing that data forward using, you know, advanced denoising algorithms and so on and so on. Again, this is speculative because I am basing this purely off of this information and, you know, a couple of uh, whispers I've heard, but I wouldn't be surprised if AMD are going to be utilizing this in some form or another for improving ray tracing functionality. Now, it will be very interesting whether this is the case or not. Unfortunately, we don't exactly have a full list of everything that... Uh, it's capable of RDNA3 and that's putting it extremely mildly. We don't have like a block diagram and so on and so on. And furthermore, we don't know the impact of running these instructions on the GPU to know performance speed up and that type of thing. However, I do find this particularly interesting. But now let's actually get onto the official stuff from AMD. I want to give actually credit to WCCF Tech for this. It's a couple of days old. Um, but AMD basically have confirmed some very interesting things in the Financial Analyst Day. I'm going to read this whole thing verbatim, or at least I'll try to be as verbatim as possible. It, RDNA 3, is also a first gaming GPU architecture that will be leveraging an enhanced 5NM process and an advanced chip packaging technology. Another innovation includes architected um, compute units with enhanced ray tracing capabilities, and an optimized graphics pipeline with even faster clock speeds and improved power efficiency. Now, this part is actually really interesting. I want you to listen to this really closely um, because it will bring more photorealistic effects into the domain of real-time gaming, and we are developing hybrid approaches that take performance of rasterization combining with the fidelity of ray tracing to deliver the best real-time immersive experiences without compromising performance. They also mentioned about multimedia as well, which I'm not going to discuss in this section because, yeah, I want, to, I want to keep this as tight as possible in the discussion. But the reason I find this so interesting, well, first of all, obviously they've basically confirmed what I myself and others have leaked for a while, that the ray tracing capabilities of RDNA 3 are significantly improved. To my understanding, it's still using a kind of similar approach to RDNA um two basically it's essentially reusing the tmus although i think there are you know, some architectural differences in how it's implemented uh, and obviously they are much more performant but also there they were discussing things like you know photorealism and immersive experiences so it does kind of beg a lot of questions because RDNA 3 has a ton of different power envelopes. Obviously, it's got, you know, the 300, 400, whatever, what, you know, high-end desktop GPUs. But furthermore, RDNA 2, for example, was used in smartphones. Now, I am spitball spitballing, excuse me, I am speculating. And this is not based on leaks. This is not based upon sources. But I do wonder how transferable, especially with the immersion discussion how transferable this would be for like ultra low power like vr devices for example it'll be very interesting to see how that works obviously rdna uh, 2 for example was very efficient when it comes to low power envelopes so it'll be very interesting to see how all of that kind of takes up takes off excuse me over the next couple of years and lastly i just want to briefly discuss some intel 13900k benchmarks i'm just going to go over these pretty quickly there has been an engineering sample it's one of the late qualification samples but it is still not final retail that has basically had its performance numbers leaked online now i want to stress two things one we are not looking at final retail silicon here so things like clock frequency are not going to be well let's just say running at optimum speed then the last point is that the BIOSes are still really early. And if you guys have been into PCs for any length of time, you'll know that a BIOS update can make a world of difference. But these benchmarks anyway come from Lords, that's with Triple Z, um, who is on Chip Hell. And as I mentioned, it's a confidential engineering sample that they've managed to procure. Unfortunately, we only have a few benchmarks. Predominantly, we're looking at CPU Z, which obviously doesn't give us great insight into gaming benchmarks. But you can see a 13900K, um, which is an ES1, versus a 12900K. I'm going to be using WCCF Tech, who have done a nice comparison point here with different uh, processes. Obviously, the 12900K 
um, would also depend on things like the uh, you know power envelope and stuff. But anyway, um, so the 12900K scores 11,719. The ES1 scores 12,360. I'm just going to be rounding up and down. Whereas ES3, meanwhile, scores around 18,000 points. And you can see how this compares to the 5950X. Obviously, it's multi-thread. It's using those additional um, those additional um, energy efficient cores. The 13900K. Um, Meanwhile, in the single thread, gets around 880 points in um, with ES, uh, ES3. ES1, meanwhile, is 611, which means it's actually slower than both the 5950 and also the 12900K. Again, I want to stress that these clock frequencies, they are not final, and most likely we're going to be seeing higher speeds. Um, I've mentioned this in several videos at this point, but I'm sure I'll get comments otherwise, and this is just my prediction. I suspect that AMD and Intel will be fighting one another quite extensively over the next while, you know, when it comes to the 13th generation and Zen 4. Uh, I don't really know which is going to be faster. I think that it's going to be very application dependent and so on. Obviously, one issue that Intel has is the fact that it doesn't have the um, AVX512 instructions, which granted aren't used in a ton of things, but for example, if you want to go with a lower core count or, you know, whatever setup and you do a lot of, is it PS3? I think it's a PS3 emulator, um, which uses AVX512. I think it was, I think it was like 20 or 30% speed up. I can't remember. That's just, uh, you know, so, you know, it, it, it is kind of used, but not exactly heavily. So Intel does have a slight deficit there. Obviously it had to be disabled it because of the way it's kind of doing stuff, quote unquote, with Windows, as far as I remember anyway. Um, so AMD may have some advantages in AVX512 workloads. I suspect a lot of multi-thread workloads. Intel may win. It's really going to depend, I think, on like clock frequencies and perhaps a plethora of other things. But um, the, the the real crux of the matter, though, is that um, the Vcash Zen 4s are going to be kind of ridiculous. There are a lot of rumors that they're going to be launching this year, the Vcashes. I'm very, very skeptical about that. I'm hearing it's going to be Q1 or Q2, more likely Q1. But again, you know, with all of these release dates, not only are you dealing with things like the fact that the release date themselves is very flexible, like how many times have NVIDIA changed the release date of the RTX 40 series, for example, not least of which because of oversupply of the RTX 30 cards. But you also have the fact that sometimes just information is wrong. So, yeah. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you did, then you know what to do. It's YouTube, so you leave a like and kind of all that stuff. Let me know down below, though, which process you're more interested in so far. Are you going with Zen 4? Are you going with the 13th generation? Are you going to be holding fire? Especially given, you know, the V caches are going to be coming out. I will warn you guys, <laughs> although I've about to say something but ridiculously stupidly obvious they're probably going to be pretty expensive the v cores um the v cash excuse me um especially if you're going with a higher core count although yeah i mean they could cost two dollars for all i know but more realistically they're going to be really expensive um so it's going to be very interesting oh also there have been i just want to quickly throw this in there have been some also some rumors that the um, Zen 3 architecture is going to be receiving some higher core count uh, Vcash processors for AM4. I don't think that's true. I'm not basing this on, you know, any sources or anything. I just am very skeptical of, of like, that information. Maybe I'm wrong. It would be a great send-off for AM4, but I don't really think AMD are going to do it. That's just my opinion, though. With that said, I'm going to let you guys go. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.